Measuring over 10 feet tall and using an estimated 30,000 pieces, this is my custom LEGO Saturn V Moon Rocket. Holding the Saturn V firmly to the ground is the base. The base is littered with ground equipment and other small details that are used before liftoff. The ground crew is busy moving around equipment and preparing the rocket pad for launch. All sorts of smaller fuel tanks and other small machinery are present on the pad before liftoff. The base measures 6 inches in vertical height and the main surface measures 3 by 4 feet. As you can see, some smaller pieces of equipment along with an auxiliary power unit. The auxiliary power unit appears to be powering some other large pieces of equipment. And of course there are some small details off to the side. The area that I have set up behind the tower assembly is quite barren, except for this one little mechanic. Hid away behind the elevator shaft is a power function battery pack. This battery pack controls lights on the base floor of the tower. Surrounding the elevator shaft are some smaller things that the ground crew might use. Behind another auxiliary power unit, there are some containers and some hoses that could be used for various tasks before launch. About two levels up on the tower, we can see the first of many walkways that connects the tower to the Saturn V itself. On the first platform, there appears to be a couple of cameras pointing downward too. The Saturn V rocket itself takes up about 9 feet of the total display space. Along the sides of the rocket, you will find the words United States spelled out along with the United States flag. The engine bells of the rocket sit about 4 inches deep into the base. Many hundreds of those 1x2 grill pieces were used in order to achieve this look. The Saturn V has 4 large fins at the base of the rocket. Along the body, you will find these large black and white stripes that were used to measure the rocket's rotation when it was taking off. The third stage uses the same technique for the body that the rest of the rocket uses. Directly above the third stage is where the lunar module would be held. The command and service module sit proudly at the top of the stack. The command module is currently attached to the white room. Topping off the rocket is the launch escape tower. The launch escape tower has four rocket engines mounted to it. The launch escape tower would remove the command module in an emergency during launch. When breaking down the rocket, the launch escape tower comes off first, followed by the command and service module, then off comes the third stage. After that, the second stage can then be removed, and then finally that skirt between the first and second stage. The tower itself has large pipes running up the side of it. I tried to be as accurate and realistic with these as I could be. About every three levels, there is a walkway that connects the Saturn V to the launch tower. Above the third level, each level is identical, so we're just going to skip right over them. Those walkways can retract back into the tower as well. Each walkway has the ability to retract away from the rocket before launch in order to get out of its way. Those large pipes running up the side of the tower were a really fun thing to add. The gantries can attach themselves to the Saturn V in order to supply power to the rocket prior to launch. Some of the floors have containers and small details, but like I said earlier, most of them are identical. The launch tower itself has about 16 floors. As we near the top of the tower, we get to see the main walkway that goes to the command module. We can see the crew of Apollo 11 getting ready to board the Saturn V for their historical mission. You can see that the astronauts are carrying their personal ventilation units as they get ready to board the Saturn V rocket. The walk walkways lead from the tower to the rocket. At the end of the walkway is the famous Apollo White Room. You can see some greebling on the roof of the White Room to add more detail. The walkway itself is comprised of a large amount of those fence pieces along with those one by one red round bricks. Of course, Neil Armstrong is in the front wearing the mission commander's red stripes on his arms. And back behind there is the final toilet on Earth. In order to access the next level, you need to climb up a ladder that would definitely not be approved today. 
On the second to last level, there is a large gray box that houses the machinery for the crane. After the Minificus scale yet another unsafe ladder, they finally arrive at the crane at the very top of the tower. The crane itself can rotate a full 360 degrees in order to get out of the way for the launch. And of course we could not forget about the large rods that connect the launch escape tower. After spending many months and using thousands of parts, the largest project I've ever done is complete. It's been a long and hard road and failures did happen, but in the end, the project was a success. Changes will continue to be made, but for now, this model is done. I hope that you have enjoyed watching me build this as much as I have enjoyed building this. As always, continue building.